It's been long awaited, but the moment is finally here, guys. I've been procrastinating about making this video, mostly because I've been super busy and haven't had time to actually sit down and be able to focus and tell you guys how I meal prep and how I eat as an intermittent alternate day faster. So all the questions that I have received, I shall answer in this video. And if I forget any, don't forget to leave me a little comment down in the comment section. You can message me on Instagram. You can message me off of my website. I'll also link my email below and you guys can ask me any questions if I did not cover something that you guys want to know and I forgot about because let's face it, I am pretty forgetful. We all know this. <laughs> if you don't know me, hi, my name is Rachel. I'm an intermittent alternate day faster and I have been doing it for 13 months as of Friday. Yesterday I weighed in after doing intermittent alternate day fasting, eating the way that I do, explaining to you guys what I do along with exercise after month seven. I did not exercise before month seven of intermittent alternate day fasting. I have officially lost 102 pounds with this method of eating. The first thing I want to point out is alternate day fasting is not a diet. It is a pattern of eating. So I am going to go over my notes here and tell you guys what all is going on because I'm OCD and have like four pages, but you know, we're just gonna pretend that I'm not looking down constantly at a notebook and that I'm getting everything across. <laughs> so welcome to how I meal prep as an ADFer alternate day faster. First question you probably have is what is intermittent alternate day fasting? Like I said earlier, intermittent fasting is an eating pattern, not a diet, um, where you cycle between periods of eating and fasting. It does not say anything about what foods you eat, but when you should eat them. There are several different methods of intermittent alternate day fasting or alternate day fasting or intermittent fasting in general. One of the most popular being the 16-8 method where you fast for 16 hours, usually when you're asleep and you don't eat again until like lunchtime and then you eat for eight hours and then you start the process again. But I had, had chosen when I started intermittent alternate day fasting. So I will fast for anywhere between 36 to 40 hours without eating. During the fasting state, I drink a cup of black coffee in the morning and then throughout the rest of the day, I drink water. Occasionally I'll drink a sparkling water, but I try to do those in moderation just because there has been studies done that it can spike your insulin levels and keep that weight that you're trying to get rid of on. So I try to do those in moderation and try not to do them, obviously, very often. On my eat days, I can eat whatever I want. Um, that means carbs, sweets, etc. There are a lot of people out there that combine the keto diet with intermittent fasting, and that's not something that I do. I basically eat what I want and just count my calories. The reason I personally don't follow the keto diet is because I don't want to limit myself any more than I already do. I already don't eat every other day. So if I want to eat a freaking bagel for breakfast or something, then I'm going to, basically. Um, there's nothing wrong if you do keto, more power to you. I personally have chosen not to do that and with not doing that, I've still lost 102 pounds, which is a lot. <laughs> so let's get into how I meal prep as an alternate day faster. Um, first off, if you're wanting to follow my method, follow this video and this is what I do. A lot of people ask me, what do you eat? Um, how do you know what to eat? What are your calories and all that? I'm gonna go over all this in this video and you guys will kind of see. Now this is all my own opinion and my own options. If you do not believe in this or follow this method, then that's completely fine. Do what is best for you, but this is what has worked for me personally. I just wanna put that out there because I know there will probably be some people that like, well, why do you not do this? Or why do you do that and you don't do this? And this works for me. This is what I stick to, just saying. First thing you wanna do is what is your allotted calories? Now, um, I highly suggest that you count your calories whenever you do alternate day fasting. Um, you wanna make sure you're getting enough food because eating less than your maintenance um, calories or your total daily energy expenditure or TDE can still be damaging because you're not eating the next day. Also with counting calories, you're making sure that you're not overeating on your eat days. I like using tdeecalculator.net to calculate my calories. It's pretty simple. All you do is put in your age, height, weight, and your daily exercise, and you see what your BMR, or basal metabolic rate calories are, as well as um, your TDEE calories. BMR is the amount of calories you burn while resting, or as if you were to lay in bed all day and not get up and move around. 
I also like using the Lose It app. It is kind of like my fitness pal. They're both very, very similar. You can document all the foods that you eat there. Um, it syncs with your iPhone health app if you have an iPhone. I'm not sure about Android. So that way it counts your steps as well. Uh, you can add in your own foods. You can put in your goal of your weight. It kind of gives you um, the leeway to kind of move your calories around if you're wanting to eat more in a deficient or more of over. It's very easy. I love using that app personally. It's been the only one that I have used for the past year. Once you determine what your BMR and your TDEE is, you'll kind of know how many calories you're allowed to eat on your eat days. I like setting my calories on the calorie app between my BMR BMR and my TDEE, mostly because that way if I were to eat over the amount that I've given myself, I know that I've not hit my TDEE. And that's what you want to do is either hit your TDEE or remain under it um, by a little bit. Don't go so crazy into the deficient that like you're eating 700 calories under your TDE, you want to make sure that it's a good balance. When I first started with intermittent fasting, I would set my calculator at about my BMR a little bit above it, mostly because I work a sedentary job, so I sit all day, and I wasn't getting up and being active. It wasn't until month seven that I actually started working out, and then um, I could basically eat more into my TDEE range over my BMR range. Now that we know how many calories you can eat on your eating days, let's look at recipes. So finding recipes has really never been easier because of Pinterest. I don't know if you guys use it, but this tool is the most amazing thing since sliced bread and I love me some sliced bread. I literally do nothing but Pinterest in my free time. <laughs> I research low calorie meals, low calorie recipes. All you have to do is just search for it and then you can find it. It's really simple. Whenever I'm researching meals, I always like to double check the calorie count on the meal. So I will go to the actual website and scroll down until I find the recipe and if the calorie amount is there and it's low enough for me personally, then I pin it to my board and save it for later, obviously. That way I can see if it fits in my daily budget for calories. I'm gonna go ahead and also link my Pinterest board below because if you guys are really confused and don't know what to do for meals or what to look for, then um, you can follow my board and see everything that I pin and all of my recipes that I post on Instagram or Snapchat or in my recipe blog come from Pinterest and now you guys can see where I get them from. My 2018 Fit Board is full and organized and I pin to it every day. So there's always something different. Now this is something that's not really necessary to do whenever it comes to this. If you're good at going off your phone to follow recipes, then more power to you. Go ahead and do that. I, on the other hand, have recipe binders. I have two of them. This one is filled with recipes of things that I have tried already and they're also rated so that I know if I like them or not, basically. I've tried so many things from Pinterest. And then I have this one, who is my ultimate cookbook with everything in it that I have not tried. Everything is organized by breakfast, meals, vegan meals, veggie meals, desserts, all in these binders. And I print them out and I put them in there. And then that way, what I like to do afterwards is um, not all of the recipes and the websites you find the recipes from are gonna have an accurate calorie count for your ingredients. So what I like to do is I take my recipes, I print them, I put them in my binder, and then um, whenever I'm getting ready to go grocery shopping, I'll go grocery shopping for a two week period, I'll go through the binder and I'll find recipes that look good. I'll pull them out and then I will do my own little research at figuring out how many calories each recipe has. And by this, I mean, I take the ingredients that I already have and I write the totals next to the recipe. I will show you an example. Baked blueberry oatmeal. I basically take all the ingredients and I add them up next to each ingredient and then I divide it and figure out how much the calorie count is. And that is how I document my calories for the day and I know specifically how many calories each meal has this way. Yes, it's a lot of work, but to me it's worth it because I wanna make sure that I'm eating in my allotted calorie amount. And um, obviously it's been working for me. Another thing that you can do whenever you're calculating all your calories is see what can you modify. For example, if you see that there is sugar in a recipe. You could modify a Splenda or Truvia or Stevia for the sugar and then you can cut out quite a few calories. Of course the recipe isn't going to be necessarily the same because you're going to be modifying with a healthier version, 
but it's pretty similar and you're also eating healthier this way. One of the biggest things that I always modify in a recipe is milk. I use almond milk more than any other type of milk. I actually have not had like dairy milk from a cow in a very, very long time, mostly because I wasn't drinking it. It's very high in calories, even 2%. Um, so I would get almond milk because it lasts so much longer than regular milk. I have an unsweetened vanilla and then I have an unsweetened regular. I use the regular for a lot of cooking and I use my vanilla for a lot of baking. So it's really up to you. If you do not want to substitute your milks, then use regular milk. Personally, I do that to help cut back on calories. One thing I want to mention as well is don't be deceived if you think the meal is lower in calories, you're not going to get full because Typically, you'll get just as full eating a lower calorie meal than you will a higher calorie meal, depending on the ingredients you use, of course. If you're eating healthier and you're eating a lot of fiber and fruits and vegetables, those have a lot of good qualities to them, obviously, that are gonna fill you up more than if you eat like potato chips or something like that. Eating healthier, not only is broccoli and green beans and fruits and vegetables are all lower in calories, but they also fill you up more than they would if you were eating a bag of potato chips or eating potato chips with your sandwich for lunch or something. So try to substitute some of the things that you are used to eating with your lunches and your meals with vegetables. Do I really have to say that though? I think that's just kind of common sense to everybody. Another thing I do, which is not necessary, but I like doing it because I like meal prepping, and that's kind of what this whole video is about, is I have a notebook where I write down each eat day, and I write down the meals that I'm gonna have for each eat day. Um, and then as the day goes on, I cross that out. So this way I also know what I'm gonna be getting for groceries for two weeks, or what I'm gonna be eating for each meal, and then I can meal prep the night before if I need to, whatever I'm gonna be eating on the next day. Now, my meal prepping book is for two people. So if you have a bigger family, you'll have to adjust accordingly. But each meal I make gives me about enough leftovers for a lunch the next eat day. So that way I won't have to make a lunch for the next eat day. However, there are some times whenever there is no food and I need to make meals. And a lot of people are like, how do you do that without eating anything? By meal prep the night before and I'm cooking pasta, I have to make sure that the pasta is done. So of course I will taste test a noodle or something like that on a fasting day and try not to beat myself up over it. But if you guys have watched my past videos, you know how hard I am on myself whenever I do stuff like that. So typically I try not to. Anymore though, it's really easy for me to cook on a fasting day and not eat what I'm cooking. Mostly because I have such a greater appreciation for food and I really put a lot of love and care and modifications and healthy ingredients and stuff like that because it's so much better for you than if you were to not cook the night before and then for lunch the next day you're having to go get fast food, which obviously is not as healthy for you. So I highly suggest that you meal prep the day before or even if you meal prep on an eat day, then you will have food that you can eat the rest of the week without having to go out and get some kind of um, fast food or something like that. The last random tidbit of information I wanna give you guys is restaurant calories. You wanna go out to eat sometimes and my biggest suggestion to you is to look on the website before you go and look at the menu. Um, sometimes menus will have nutritional facts next to it and sometimes you have to do some research and see how much everything is in the calorie count department. Um, a lot of chain restaurants and fast food restaurants actually have nutritional facts on their website. So if you're getting ready to go to Burger King or whatever, you can pull up their website and you can look at their nutritional facts menu and you can see how much calories everything is and then you can decide what you want to get from there. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I do on the Lose It app. They are pretty accurate on a lot of things, but sometimes it varies. So I always like to add in the most accurate representation that I have of the calorie count. So I go to their website and I look at the nutritional facts menu. Now, sometimes you're not gonna have that necessarily whenever it comes to certain restaurants. So the best thing that you can do is estimate. Um, I do this a lot, but I've been doing this for so long now that I can kind of guess how much everything is going to be whenever it comes to calorie counting. You basically just think of the ingredients in your head, how much everything is, and go from there and kind of add it up and then you can decide how much it's gonna be. Um, you can also research different restaurants as version of the same food and see um, if it looks about right. That's kind of what I do a lot of times, but like I said, I also kind of know more what everything is now that I've been doing this for so long. So don't let going out to eat keep you from eating at that specific restaurant. You can still go out and enjoy and splurge every once in a while. It's okay for you to go over on your calories every once in a while. You wanna be able to go out and have a good time Calorie counting should be the least of your worries. Go out and enjoy the time with your friends and your family. People ask me a lot about what to do on certain holidays and stuff like that. 
For me last year and this year actually, Christmas and Thanksgiving are on fasting days. I ate on those days because I was with my family and I wanted to enjoy myself. It's okay for you to eat on a fasting day. It's not gonna kill you and it's not gonna ruin everything like I thought it was at the time. You'll be fine. Just make sure that you are counting your calories and estimating your calories the best that you can and you can fit that into your alternate day fasting lifestyle. Most importantly, the best thing about intermittent alternate day fasting is that uh, you can have fun with what you eat. Now, I know with a lot of restrictive diets like keto and stuff like that, you have to cut out certain things because you're not allowed to. With alternate day fasting, you can eat whatever you want. Of course, in moderation though. Make the desserts you want. You can still modify those recipes. I just made a chocolate chip cupcake recipe that was absolutely amazing and each cupcake was like 100 calories. You can still make those things that you love. You'd be really Really surprised with what you can find online and then with modifications and things like that you have to play around with it of course you can make those things that you are craving and you don't have to cut them out of your diet which is amazing also feel free to eat a full fat cupcake feel free to eat a bowl of ice cream you can do that it's okay you can do those things in moderation now if you're having a bowl of ice cream like every night then this probably won't really work as well for you. Um, like I said, moderation is key. I like to limit myself to one sweet tree a week. So let's see, I had a bowl of ice cream on Monday night. So my next sweet treat won't be until next week. You can do things like that with this. That's one thing that I absolutely love about alternate day fasting because I've lost 102 pounds eating in moderation what I still want to eat. My last suggestion is be patient. It's taken me 13 months to get where I am today. This isn't a quick fix. You're not gonna drop 100 pounds in six months. You're not gonna lose 30 pounds in one month. It takes time for your body to adjust and change. This is a whole lifestyle change. After I'm done with alternate day fasting, I will have learned so much and bettered my knowledge on foods and things to eat that there's no way I'm gonna be going back to those old habits that I was doing before I was eating like this. Now I think I got everything covered with all of that. It seemed kind of rambly to me. <laughs> Let's move on to questions. I reached out to you guys on Instagram and Snapchat and said if you had any questions for me to put into this video to send them my way, and I got quite a few. So I'm gonna go over some of them. Some of them were kind of repeat. That was to be expected, I'm sure. <laughs> Do you follow keto on your eat days? No, I don't. I said that earlier, mostly because I don't want to limit myself any more than I already do. I already don't eat every other day. I don't want to do any more limitations to myself. I know a lot of people have had success with keto, which is great. Um, I just personally don't follow it. There is a possibility that if I would have in the beginning, which when I first started, there was not really anything about keto out there. It has really grown a lot in the past year. Um, if I would have followed that in the beginning, I might have lost weight faster, but losing a hundred plus pounds in you know a year and a month is a lot. So I'm okay with the pace that I lost my weight at basically. Of course, there were times that I got really frustrated um, just being like, I want to eat, I'm done, I'm done fasting, I don't want to do this anymore, I want to be where I want to be. But in all honesty, I'm really grateful with the process and how long it's taken me to get where I am. But no, I do not follow keto. You don't have to follow keto with intermittent fasting. Um, I know there are some people that say, well, if you follow that and if you eat higher fats than on your fasting days, you're not going to be as hungry. But personally, I haven't really had that much experience with being so dramatically hungry that it would have mattered if I did keto or not, if that makes sense. So no, I did not follow keto. No, I don't plan on following keto. I am good with what I'm doing now. The next question, how did you get used to eating the way you do? How did you not overeat? Well, whenever I first started out with intermittent fasting, I was 236 pounds. So my TDEE, the amount, my maintenance amount of calories that was suggested for me to eat was 2,167 calories. And that is a lot of calories. Um, my BMR was 1,805. And because I kept it right into the middle and I wasn't exercising as much, I kept it close to my BMR, which is still 1,800 calories that I was eating every other day. Um, that's a lot of calories for someone to eat. So I never went over that. When I broke my fast, a lot of people ask, how do you not feel like you wanna eat everything when you break your fast? Honestly, when I break my fast, it's not like I'm starving and I need to eat everything. I still get fooled just as much as if I would've eaten the day before. So it's not like 
you have to eat everything in sight whenever you break your fast. Your body still gets full even if you didn't eat the day before. Plus as the weight dropped and um, I ate less, my stomach shrank. I struggled mostly when it came to lowering my calories at the beginning of a new month. Basically, I was just really cautious as to what I ate, and after a week, I would get used to the lower amount of calories. So I never really had or have over eating issues, I guess you would say, specifically because my calorie count was so high in the beginning anyways, that as the months progressed and I would eat less and less, my stomach shrank with it, and um, I just was really cautious as to what I ate. Um, if I would look at my calorie counter and be like, can I have that cookie? Look at my calorie counter. I only have this many calories left for the rest of the day. I still haven't eaten dinner yet. I'm not gonna eat this cookie. I'm gonna wait until I have dinner. And if I have leftover calories, then I will go back and I can eat this cookie or whatever. Just um, being cautious and managing your calories. And that's one thing I really love about the Lose It app is I can monitor what I'm eating and know what I can eat for the rest of the day. The next question is, how did you deal with hunger pains? Well, the first week, I actually ate up to 500 calories on my fasting days. Um, that was kind of what was suggested to me whenever I did my research. I read an article by Samaya Kazi. She was my biggest inspiration when it came to fasting. She says you can still eat up to 500 calories on your fasting days, um, mostly because your body burns that 500 calories throughout the day, so you still have so many more extra calories that are being burned along with that 500 that you're fine if you eat up to 500 calories on your fasting day. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, my first week of IF, I would eat up to 500 calories for dinner on my fasting days. But after that first week, I stopped doing that. Um, in the morning, I would drink black coffee and water along with the 500 calories. The next week, I was just doing black coffee and water throughout the day. And I was pretty simply able to get through the whole day without eating. It was a struggle sometimes, but um, I lived by myself and I sat down in front of the TV and I watched a lot of Netflix and I distracted myself from thinking about food. So um, it definitely took a lot of time to kind of build up to not thinking about that. They go away within five to 10 minutes. Those pains don't stay with you. What I like to think is that my body is technically looking for calories to burn and because I'm not feeding it or giving it any, then it's like, oh, well, I guess I better burn some of this fat on this body because I don't have any food to burn. Like that was kind of how I looked at it was, um, you know, your body's looking for calories, you're not giving it any, it's gonna burn your fat. Keep in mind those types of things and thoughts and I think you'll be able to pretty simply get through a whole day of fasting. You gotta keep up the determination and willpower. Those are two of the biggest things. And drink lots of water. Drink water whenever you're hungry, chug it. It will fill you up. Most of us are just dehydrated, we're not really hungry. I also get asked a lot if I've had any weight loss plateaus. And honestly, the only weight loss plateau that I've had is month 10 of intermittent fasting. And it was super discouraging because I was you know, two months away from wanting to be down to 100 pounds. And when I stepped on the scale, it did not change. I was really devastated if I'm completely honest. I was really hard on myself and I had to think back and go, okay, what can I change to see if I can get some more weight off because I am 24 pounds away from my goal and I hadn't budged. So basically what I did was start looking at lower carb meals. Now I hadn't looked at anything lower carb and I'm not talking about doing keto, I'm talking about looking at lower carb meals, things that I could cut out that I wasn't eating as much. So I really started researching different recipes and seeing what I can find um, to get out of that whole higher carb type meal thing. That was really the only thing that I changed though. And currently I don't do anything extremely lower carb that I can think of. I am definitely more mindful of my carbs now than I used to be. But um, you know, after two weeks into month, 10, I wanna say it was, I stepped on the scale and I was down five pounds. By the end of month 10, at the beginning of month 11, I only weigh myself once a month for personal preference to keep me from getting discouraged. I'd actually lost 12 pounds for month 10. So I was able to go into month 11 and be like, okay, I'm 12 pounds down, I have two more months to go, let's see if I can hit my goal type of thing. So that's the only weight loss plateau that I had and really all that I did was kind of change a little bit more what I was eating. I had somebody ask me, has what I've eaten changed? Yeah, I mean, I eat a lot less and healthier in general. Um, 
I don't really eat beef very much anymore. I replace a lot of beef in recipes with turkey instead. Like I said earlier, I haven't had cow's milk or dairy milk in a really long time, mostly because I wasn't drinking it, it was going bad, and I replace it with almond milk. Basically, I do whatever I can to save calories in a recipe. I modify everything. If I can look at a recipe and it calls for butter, then I'm like, well, I can use light butter, and I'll use a light butter or a heavy butter, and things like that, which is a lot of the reason why, too, I don't follow keto is that a lot of their recipes are extremely high in calories and I count my calories you know pretty specifically I'm really strict on what I eat for my calories and um, there's a lot of fats and things like that in keto which I don't know a lot about it I've not done a lot of research about it just specifically because I'm not really interested in doing a lot of research about it like I said before if you're into doing the keto diet and things like that more power to you it's just personally not my preference when it comes to what I want to eat um, and there's a lot of higher calorie meals for keto. And um, like I said, I like doing lower calorie meals and things like that. So yes, what I have eaten has changed, mostly because I count my calories, I modify for healthier versions, and I'm more health conscious as to what I eat. Um, for example, like I said earlier, if I see a cookie there, literally behind my camera there are a stack of cookies and there are a bunch of bananas and if I were to eat anything I would pick the bananas over the cookies. Like I said this whole thing is a lifestyle change. You want to eat healthier for you and make better choices for you and in doing that you have to give up some things. Now like I said earlier, you can eat those cookies in moderation just don't eat the whole plate of them because that's not gonna really help anything. The last question that I have that somebody asked me was do I count my macros? And no I don't. I don't even know how to count macros if I'm completely honest. I eat what I want to eat and go from there. I go off my calories like I said before. I know a lot of people count their macros and it's something that I'll eventually start doing whenever I go back to eating the other day. I'm gonna have to learn how to do it. I don't know how to do it now. I don't even know what my macros would be or how to calculate them or anything like that. So um That'll be a whole new learning experience whenever I get there. But as for right now, I do not count my macros, my fats, my proteins, my carbs, or anything like that. I basically just eat what I want within a calorie range. I make healthier decisions, health conscious decisions, and go from there. And that is how I eat as an alternate day faster. Like I said, there are others out there that do completely different methods and do different things when it comes to eating for them. But this has worked for me, obviously, because I've lost as much as I have. Yeah, guys, that's really it. That is how I eat, how I meal prep as an intermittent alternate day faster. I really hope I got everything covered in this video. If I did not, please feel free to reach out to me and ask me questions on my Instagram, my Snapchat. I will include my email and my website below. You guys can check that out. Um, I have basically everything that I do with intermittent alternate day fasting on my website. I like to direct people there because I get a lot of the same questions every day and um, it just has all my information in one area. So feel free to check that out if you'd like and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I never ask for that. This is like once in a blue moon that I ever ask for that. I have vlogs that I come out with on Mondays and Thursdays. I try to keep it interesting. Thank you so much guys for taking time to stopping by and watching this video. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all the supporters who stopped by to watch this. Of course, I will see you guys on my next vlog and that's it for now folks.